Welcome to the second episode of Working and Living in Finland. Here we are together to find the answer to this question. Why Finland is the happiest country in the world? And if so, are the foreigners really happy in this country as well? And in the following, we are going to find out the roadmap of an international successful and have a chat with him to learn his roadmap and then his mindset as well. But without further ado, as the promise of our every episode, let's get to know the country a little bit together. Oletko onnistunut omassa somekuplassasi välttymään tiedolta, että Suomessa on huutava pula hoivaalan työntekijöistä? Meitä ne mitä ulkkareita kaivataan. Suomessa on ihan tarpeeksi omaakin työvoimaa. Niinkö? Sen lisäksi, että osa kotimaamme tallaista ei ole halukas tekemään hoivatyötä sovituilla työehdoilla ja palkkatasolla, meillä ei vain yksinkertaisesti riitä osaavia tekijöitä tähän hommaan. Nyt tähän ilmeiseen ongelmaan on tulossa muutos, kun syksyllä 2020 Kuopioon saapui espanjalaisia terveydenhuollon ammattilaisia. Minun nimeni on Kristina, soi espanjola ja soi auxiliar de enfermería. Y bueno, he venido a este bonito país a ofrecer mi trabajo y, y ofrecer mi tiempo para ayudar a los demás. Eh, vamos, somos en auxiliares de enfermería en España. Entonces el Tenemos que estudiar el idioma, como es nuestro trabajo, las palabras en finés. ¿Un cosa es el po? On. Kivakula. Kivakot mukana. Pero el trabajo en realidad no es ningún problema. Comenta Yari. Mukuitko huin. Auska tabata. Aina. El tuesti. Nuestras expectativas eh, eran, eh, bueno, eh, tener un, un trabajo en el que no estuvieses siempre temiendo que te van a echar, que es algo que ahora mismo en España pasa mucho. Creemos que aquí hay muchas más oportunidades, no solo de trabajo, sino de estudios para, para nosotros y para nuestra familia tener una vida mejor de la que teníamos allí en España. Suomi on aina ollut ja tulee tulevaisuudessakin olemaan asuttu eri kansalaisuuden omaavista osaajista. On enemmän kuin luontevaa, että myös eri palveluammatit pystyvät vastaamaan moninaiseen kulttuuritaustaan. Pues eh, las expectativas que tengo que tenemos aquí eh, en un principio es quedarnos a vivir aquí en el país. Aquí nuestras expectativas eran estar todo el tiempo posible, eh, estar en un lugar tranquilo y, y bueno que nuestros hijos se adaptasen bien a, a los cambios. Y creo que, que va a ser un buen lugar para, para vivir con, con toda la familia. Ihan kiva, jos meikäläistäkin tulee joku joskus hoitamaan. Welcome back. So today, as you can see, Dr. Jennifer De Paula has joined me. Um, a person with strong opinions and a source reliable to discuss today's topic, as uh, she is a researcher on Finland's happiness. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so the first thing first, would you please let us know why Finland is the happiest country in the world? Yes. So Finland is the happiest country in the world according to the World Happiness Report, mm -hmm. which uh, based its data on the country ladder, which uh, asks respondents to rate their lives um, according to how satisfied they are with their life at the present moment mm -hmm. on a scale from zero to ten. So is there any uh, factors that, you know, we rely on to, to that they are going to answer? Is there any like um, specific factors for that? That is the simple question that is asked to respondent and mm. that's where we get the ranking from. But then researchers try to explain the difference in the ranking, why a country ranks so high or mm. so low in the ranks. And um, they usually explain that by looking at different factors. Um, according to which the country is ranked. Uh, they are, for example, uh, the gross domestic product, so mm -hmm. income, uh, healthy life expectancy, uh, generosity, the social support that uh, people have in a country, and also freedom and, and trust. So if I want to wrap it up again, it is based on, because then I have to get it out also, based on uh, 
healthy life expectancy, which means like which means uh, longevity. So how long? Even you, you got even harder. Now I'm even more <laughs> longevity. <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> so like how long uh, people are expected to live uh -huh. with a good in good condition with a good quality okay, of Okay, so for example, that's why then we see people even when they are 80 years old or even higher, they, they, they ride a bicycle There in you the go, street. that's, okay, a, that's okay. a perfect example. It. It. Yes. Then it is the income that they have, yes. the, the trust that they have in the country, also yes. the social support. Uh, social support so that how, they get. how many people do you feel that you could, do you have like um, one or a few close people you feel mm -hmm. you can rely okay. on? And, and then what was the uh, other one? Freedom. Freedom that there is. Okay, yes. so based on these, th there were six, if I'm yes. not mistaken. So based on these six, uh, they are rating it. And Finland has become the happiest country in the world for five years in a row. So I couldn't find any personal, you know, happiness in it. Because uh, we, we know that even Finns, uh, they have their own personal problems. So they, that's what they're always amazed that, oh, come on, why, why are we ha the happiest? Is it, does it, so it doesn't mean that people laugh a lot. It means that... No, in, in, indeed, it's based on, on life satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a cognitive judgment. So how satisfied we are with life overall, mm -hmm. not how frequently we smile or how frequently we have fun. Yeah, the, yes. the, the reason I, I mentioned this, because then I have heard it from the many Finns even, it is this that they said, we are the happiest country in the world, but we have the highest suicide rate. So how is it even possible? Yes, well, that's, um, that's, that might be based on outdated information, because there was so a time... True. Well, it, it used to be true. Back in the 80s, there was a peak in the suicide rate in Finland. So we're talking about so 40 years ago. So they're referring to 1980s records. Yes, but because it was like such a clamorous fact, it tends to stick in the collective memory. So it's still remembered. But since then, actually, there was a very swift campaign, like a prevention suicide campaign. Um, and uh, that was correlated also with Kela offering more support to diagnose depression, which mm -hmm. is highly correlated with suicide, and also with the um, taboos around seeking for professional help being kind of dismantled. And nowadays, according, for example, to Eurostats, Finland is, uh, Finland's uh, rates of suicide is quite average, so nothing too special there. For example, France, uh, Luxembourg, Belgium, Hungary rate much higher than, than Finland. Finland. Yes. Okay, so so this is not uh, this is just a phrase that is so catchy in the it's in the mouth. It's catchy indeed. Yes. Okay, so I get it. So this is not the so this is the happiest country, which means that they might have their own personal problems and even depression and so forth. Which yes. does not. It's just, it's just a fact that they are satisfied with their lives, and um, the fact that. The, the, this suicide rate is no more a fact, but it's an outdated... Yes. Uh, what is a fact and what is still relevant is the rates of depression, which continues hmm. to be high. But um, also according to the uh, World Health Organization, we need to remember that in countries like Finland, usually there is uh, better access to being diagnosed with mm -hmm. depression. So it's... Um, it's easier to be diagnosed with depression because there is better access to a mental health care mm -hmm. and also better access to treatment. Yeah. So of course that has an effect then on the on the figures. Indeed, indeed. Yes. Um, so our topic suggests, as our topic suggests, Finland is the happiest country in the world, but are the foreigners really happy too? Yes, this is a good question. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is something that we keep hearing that Finland uh, is happy just for the Finns. Mm -hmm. So is it really true? Well, we have, a, we have the answer to that based on data and it's good news. So um, actually the World Happiness Report is always based on a topic every year. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, the topic was happiness and migration. Okay. So we have data based on which we can answer this question. And the good news is that the uh, people who are born locally are as happy usually as the people who are migrants. In Finland? In Finland and in general, in every country. Okay, so, so, so these records were also uh, putting the migrants in. Exactly, they, they, are, they are included in the sample. 
I see. Yes, and uh, so we know that Finland ranks uh, high in the happiness of people born locally as mm -hmm. well as in its migrants. I see. So, yes. um, 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 congratulations, uh, the, the fellow migrants. We are among the happiest country, happiest people in the world as well. But um, we have asked some fellow young lads about this question: What is happiness to you? Let's go and watch it together, and then we will come back with Jennifer to talk about it. Uh, for me, happiness, uh, it is to feel comfortable and to feel uh, when you are full of energy and ideas and all things are in the right places. Happiness to me is safety and security and my pet cat. Uh, happiness to me is uh, having a purpose-driven life and uh, knowing that you have a family and friends who love and support you in your life and what you go through and knowing that is the best thing that makes me happy. Happiness to me is um, self-reliance, um, professional success and having a strong uh, support system in family and friends. For me happiness is being able to work on my goals and uh, being mentally stable and spiritually stable and uh, financially stable. Happiness to me is being able to spend time with my nieces and nephew and being able to spend time with my family and friends. So what do you think about what, what these young students, let's say, were saying? I think this was really complex and um, this show, shows us how much more complex the understanding of happiness is when you ask everyday people like the person on the street compared to what then we can measure in mm. a in a laboratory setting so here there were some elements that had to do with life satisfaction so like the person mentioning for example like uh, their life circumstances and the possibility to progress in their career so that's more of a cognitive judgment then there was um also something to do more with engagement, which um, has more to do with the kind of happiness that, uh, that is more related to how meaningful mm -hmm. you feel your life is. Yeah, so, so, so you're more satisfied very, toward your life. They, they usually correlate, so feeling positive, positive emotions, life satisfaction and also engagement, they usually correlate mm -hmm. with each other, even though they can be considered separately. I see. I see. Um, so, as a last thing, let's just, let's just speak about the honesty in Finland, because then you were mentioning the the trust as one of the factors in in the in, in the ratings that makes Finland as the happiest country in the world. Uh, what do you have to mention about this trust and honesty in Finland? Yes, I think that culturally is a very a very important topic. So, uh, there are different different values that that. Uh, kind of make Finnishness mm -hmm. and um, hard work, um, education, equality and honesty are some some of the core values and respect for nature. Of course. Yes, yeah. some of the core values and uh, among them uh, honesty is something that we keep seeing also in, in experiments. I don't know if you've heard about the Reader Digest wallet experiment. Is it the one that people would used to leave the wallet on the street and then they would see how many people would pick it up? Exactly. And okay, then. So usually oh. Helsinki rates very high. Yeah, that, it that. was the highest as, yes. as I remember. Yes. Yeah. So that, that says a lot about, about honesty, which mm. is, of course, also linked to trust, which is one of the factors that indeed explains the high ranking in, in happiness. So, so you mentioned that it is in the, in the culture as well, and also in the ratings as well that they rate it. Uh, how is it with everyday life, like the trust in, in, uh, from the people, even they trust towards their um, even government and so forth. How, how, how does it work in Finland? Yeah, so the way is is reflected is both um, horizontally, so that would be you and I trusting each other as citizens. I, mm. I, I know that you, you're not going to uh, to try and and play tricks on me. I can trust you. We are fellow citizens and so on. And then uh, when we talk about vertical trust, we talk about trust, for example, in government or mm. like, for example, in, in, in the press yeah uh being like fair and and open so which is um which is very different from from other countries where the perceived level of corruption yes can be 
much higher. Indeed, as, as we know that Finland has been also rated as, as lowest corruption, even in yes. the government level. So that also explains a lot that why uh, the trust toward the government is different in this country and people actually trust uh, in most cases. And it also has a cultural background. But thank you so much for today and uh, being here. Um, so I know that you might have questions from uh, Jennifer or some opinions. We. Uh, as, as what we have promised, we really want to have this LinkedIn Live as question and answers, but uh, Jennifer did a, did a very big favor for us all to bring these values, even though she's so close to have a newborn so soon. So I hope that tomorrow we can have Jennifer to, for, the, for the LinkedIn Live question and answer, but if not, we will of course uh, arrange it sometime to answer all your questions. But um, at this point, let's go and watch the roadmap for our next guest. Uh, who had an quiet, let's say, amazing roadmap. He did it by the book. And we will see it together and we'll come back. Lukumano Idrisu, born and raised in Tema, Ghana. He moved to Finland in 2014 as bachelor student with not much of experience, but of course, with a lot of enthusiasm and ambition. He had one mission in the beginning when he was a student, which was to survive and build his life in Finland brick by brick by the book. In order to survive the first few years until he gets his bachelor degree, he worked as a cleaner. But this young boy from Ghana already knew his days would come sooner or later. After his studies were over, he began learning to the Finnish language and then he was able to land his first job after getting many sorry or thank yous when applying for different positions. Balakumana was not here to give up and he got his first job at Vasa University of, of Applied Sciences as an intern and another internship after that in Vasa Chamber of Commerce to work for them in seven months. But that was not enough as he had the fancy to pursue master's studies so then he could reach up to his ambitious dreams. Today he is working as a trainee in the company he used to clean for three years, this time as HR trainee and soon as HR specialist with his qualities, but that is not the only thing that he does, but also having a workshop on how students and job seekers can maximize their chances of landing jobs. There is nothing like tiredness if you need to survive, therefore keep up with this drive to thrive and in the end it will be worth the sacrifice. Welcome back. Usually we have the guests here with me, but today I am at, in Helsinki uh, taking this episode for you here. But my guest is in Vasa. Therefore, I asked my colleague Yasmin to interview him uh, on behalf of me. So here is the stage yours, Yasmin. We are eager to hear Idriso's comments. Thank you, Roham. And Welcome to Vasa and welcome to the studio, Lukumana Idrisu. Hello, thank you very much. So glad to have you here. Well, we just saw your roadmap to Finland and it is quite impressive. Persistent, that is the word I'd use to describe you. Uh, Lukumanu, you moved to Finland eight years ago. What made you um, choose to apply to Finland to study? Well, first of all, um, the reason for coming to Finland was that um, during our time, Finland had like free tuition for, I mean, international students. So I wanted to further my education and I thought Finland was the best place. Secondly, my cousin was already here. So he told, he, like, he told me about, I mean, the educational system here, which I thought was very good for my um, career ambition as well. Well, Describe a little bit about your journey here as a student in Finland. So you came to Vasa, and then what? Well, so when I came to Vasa, mm, it was a new environment for me, especially my first time in Europe, and things were done differently from here. So um, to integrate, it took me a lot of time. So I didn't really understand the culture and so on. So indeed, although I studied very well, but um, to also get some of the little things that will get me to where I want to, where I went to get to, was a little bit of a, of a challenge. So that would, that's I will say where some of the problems that I faced. Well, let's talk about these problems and these difficulties as a newcomer. Can you name a few? Well, the difficulty is first of all getting acquainted with the Finnish culture, getting to know the language, or even how 
the response to stimuli among friends. Secondly, is um, involving yourself in activities that will get you there. That, when I say there, it means that will help you get a job easily or, I mean, help you get your career ambition. I know Finland is a networked community, and the more you avail yourself to the right people, the easier your chances of getting what you want to, where, where you want to get to. So these were some of the things that I was missing, especially as a student in my early years. Well, can you please explain then, like, how, what was your mindset in the beginning about, you know, getting a career in Finland and, and how would you describe it now? Well, um, at first it was like, if you can't speak Finnish, you are finished. That was the mindset we had. Of course, it was very difficult because some of the jobs required like fluent uh, Finnish and so on. So we taught without um, having that kind of ability to speak Finnish to some appreciable um, extent, you will not be considered you know, in the labor market. But I realized that it wasn't only the case. You just need to find the right the right um, work uh, employer who will maybe consider some some of some as uh, who will then consider you as an international to hire you and then looking at i mean getting close to the people who are already in the roles that you want to get to and i mean getting more information from them will at least help you to update your skill set to be able to make yourself really available for employment uh, as a student you worked as a cleaner indeed um, how how did that help you to get acquainted with the Finnish culture or the work culture here? Well, um, I will say first of all, you just need to have a very good attitude. No matter your the situation you are in, if you are kind and you have a positive attitude and you are very good to people, they begin to want to associate themselves with you. So, for instance, when I was cleaning, I was very like open to the people. I mean, my customers or clients, and then they try to interact with me and try to give me the necessary advice that will get me to where I want to get to. Well, thinking about now your journey, where you have, how you worked hard as a student and, and, and having a job now. So what is your best advice to our viewers who are watching this episode? What should be considered when uh, trying to find a job in Finland? First of all, if you're a student and you come here to Finland, there are, I, I have created a four-step four framework. First, your career journey begins the moment you start schooling. So you need to research the companies that hire, empl um, that hire international students, Learn, to, like, try to know the kind of people and the relevant roles and ask them the questions regarding the kind of skills you will need to be able to be a successful, I mean, applicant. More so, um, try to, I would say, engage with them in a way that will kind of give you a strategic visibility. And then also, um, don't always wait to apply f with CV and cover letter. I mean, employers also kind of... Um, organize, uh, how do we say it, um, challenges for students to just know their innovation, like innovative capacity and so on. When you involve yourself in these programs, you avail yourself to employers and then um, it gives you the opportunity to become an employee. And also involve yourself in mentorship activities, which will then, I mean, get you closer to the right people who are in the industry to mentor you and then also even vouch for you to get a job that you want. Well. If we are now thinking about those international students, for example, who are in Finland right now and are, are having difficulties finding a job and finding an employer who has these mentorship programs and they are losing their hope, what would you say to them? How, how to overcome the difficulties as a newcomer? First, I will always say it's the mindset. You, you must know that um, disappointment or rejections are part of life. So first turn the rejection to redirection, then no, turn it to next opportunity. Then begin to work on yourself. Which skills do I need? And then ask the right questions from the right people who are already in the roles and in the companies of your interest. Secondly, um, try to validate your value. For instance, um, you, if you want to work as a salesperson, don't only wait to apply with a CV. 
if you have a company of your interest, begin to kind of try to know who their customers are. You can call their customers and ask them about feedback about the company, okay? And then you can create or maybe create an analysis deck and then present it to the sales manager. It tells the sales manager that you have a value. So someone applies with a CV and you, um, for instance, present a sales deck, who will be more valuable? So sometimes let's look beyond the traditional way of applying to jobs and then try to put in more effort to show or demonstrate our skills. I think that helps better. And then I always hit on this that indeed in Finland there are a lot of jobs which are there, but if you are not, if you don't get engaged with the right people, you don't get to hear of the job, not to even apply to them. So try to expand your network, get to know people, try to involve yourself in activities that kind of bring jobs and so on. I believe that will open more doors. Well, you are great at networking. So um, what would your advice be where to start looking for those networks when you are a newcomer to Finland and you don't know where those networks are? So where to start? It starts from career events organized by your school or even events organized by some of the school, um, um, event organized by the industry and then events specifically organized by companies of your interest. Involve yourself, go there, try to um, involve yourself in that, try to kind of make friends, ask questions and so on. You get visibility and then also um, try to also kind of involve yourself in like sporting activities or volunteering activities because through these events there are people who are already working in companies or occupying good positions who are already there. So the moment you are there, you can use that to build relationship with them. And you must know that networking is not about, I want a job. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be the case. The mindset in networking is that like you have to create a psychological uh, concept in that you create a value for someone, then the person will feel he owes you something in the future. So don't go and then having the mindset that I need a job. No, it, networking can take you seven months to build a relationship with someone, okay? So you go there, try to be kind, help, and so on. They see your character or your, I mean, those soft skills are the game changers, I would say so. It's not about your technicality or technical skills, but the soft skills matter to employ, employers now more than ever because an employer can train you for the hard skills but your soft skills is only dependent upon you. So don't go asking for a job, try to be kind, like involve yourself in, I mean, voluntary activities and all of that, I mean, uh, courses that will, you know, uh, that has some benefits. And at the end, I believe you meet the right people and then doors will open. Let's talk about more about these soft skills because I think you are absolutely right. And um, if we think about us Finns and our culture, we are quite reserved. Well, that's the stereotypical Finn. And um, when you came here, how did you like feel about this Finnish culture and, and our reservedness compared to what you had to offer to us? Okay, I would say one one of the one of the things that one what, that help is understanding the Finnish culture. When you understand the Finnish culture, you find the best approach, I mean, in, um, in reaching out to Finns. Okay, so I would say when I started um, learning the Finnish language, through that I learned the Finnish culture and how to approach them. So the moment you know how they behave, their response to stimuli, then you find a better approach, you know, in reaching out to them. So instead of just um, reaching out to you out of the blue and asking you about your personal life. I wouldn't do that. I try to create a conversation um, surrounding where we met. So if it's about work, we talk about work and its related activities. Then it moves from there to that. So co you create conversation based on how you meet a person. But you don't start a conversation by asking about their personal life. So I would say the approach should be to know about the, their culture and their way of life. Through that, things become easier and proper conversation can be created and not true conversation on communication, it opens doors. It does indeed. Well, um, the Finnish way of life 
Finland has been voted the happiest country in the world for the fifth time in a row. And at this point in your life, you have achieved quite a lot since coming to Finland eight years ago. For example, last year you were voted the uh, Summer Employee of the Year and you were the first alumni of the year for the Vasa University of Applied Sciences. So tell me about your happiness. How would you rate your happiness back then when you first came to Finland and now eight years later? Indeed, um, the journey has been great, I will say, and you know, those difficult moments brings the, I mean, uh, val brings value to whatever journey that you have come across. And quite aside from that, I also have my family here in Finland, and um, I would say that um, there is security and uh, access to many things that makes things easier for us here in Finland. So I will say these, what these accumulatively will, I would say increases my has increased my happiness here in Finland. So indeed, I would say I'm happy in the overall. Well, uh, thank you for sharing your inspiring story with us and I wish you all the happiness in the future as well. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And now back to you, Rohan. Thank you, Lukumano and Yasmin. Um, it was nice to hear your story and your comments on how did you do and what do you think that other internationals who are about to come to Finland or are already here has to really go to make it happen. But uh, we are here at the end of episode two and it was very nice to have the pleasure and opportunity to bring some values for you, uh, the dear audience. But we will see you next week on Wednesday before that, before we leave, before we say goodbye, let me remind you, we have tomorrow a LinkedIn question and answer. It is a LinkedIn Live. Write your questions and we will ask our guests so then they could answer it. See you next week. Have a good evening.